DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. And tonight on Running Your DJ Business, we have got Jody and Cammy with our host, Casey. How we doing, everybody? Ooh. Hey, Casey. Hello, hello. Doing? Everybody good? Good. Yes. So has everybody recuperated from the beautiful city of Las Vegas? <laughs> I think Jody I, stayed. <laughs> oh, that's right. Jody, you live I, there. So yeah, it's the, I didn't, you know. Yeah, right. I'm still here. <laughs> so... Is that just like regular blood transfusions to keep things going or how does that work? Yeah, you know, it's it sucks when you have a, a conference in your city because, you know, it's work, it's business as usual. And then you have friends in town and it's so hard to juggle everything. Like I literally have to block myself. Out. Yeah, but you get to go home and sleep in your own bed with your own dirty sheets that are made dirty by you and your husband. <laughs> I have to sleep in somebody else's strange dirty sheets so no, no. sometimes i stay at the hotel like in the I've, got, I've actually gotten a room at the tropicana you know what's odd and i thought that i stayed at hard rock because i gamble there so i got comped and i love that hotel i think it's great but uh nice. i had rod randall as my as my roomie for the week um Sorry. so he was my guest and i made a comment saying that you know what's very strange is that uh they have white bed sheets and white linens and not even off-white. Like even in the wedding world, like bride's dresses now are off-white. Right. So you'd yeah. think that it wouldn't be stark, stark white. So I don't know if that's like them overcompensating to show how clean their rooms are, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. which there's nothing wrong with having super, super clean rooms. I don't think yeah. anyone's going to argue that point. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I've never had anything but absolutely amazing service at, at Hard Rock. And so nice. I stayed it's in for wedding in VA. Um, the decor in the whole place is super, super cool. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but all of the doors yeah. are wallpapered with like different lead singers on stage as the wallpaper for the door. So it doesn't feel like you're walking down this like army barracks of all the same thing. Like in the movie, sure. the shining, remember that yeah. little <laughs> kid like on the tricycle. So it was totally different. So wow. I'm trying to find us on Facebook so that I can chat with people. There hey we guys, are. This is Howdy. And Jody, he asked if you're in the ladies' room. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not. No, no, no. No bathroom <laughs> selfie. Nope, sorry. This is my office. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting indeed. So we got Sean there. <clears throat> and we've got a whole, we've got a nice little fan club. It's The ladies are on board. So we've got Woo! DJ Dynablend and DJ Disorder and uh, Jody Harris is typing as well. Sean saying hello. DJ Stefan. We have all like the DJ DJ names here. Wow. Eric awesome. Yeager, our good friends from Indiana that just bought their tickets to uh, Marquee to, uh, yesterday, actually. So I'm nice. pretty stoked about them. And uh, Latin Beats Entertainment saying hello. So hello back to him as well. <clears throat> so. I know you guys, and that's why I asked you guys to come on board. But for those of the the unknown, the people who don't know you, Jody, why don't we start with you? Tell everybody who you are, kind of where you're from. And since we're talking about networking, talk about the different organizations that you belong to in Las Vegas. Well, of course, everybody knows me as Jody Harris. I am based in Las Vegas. I own and operate sight and sound events. We've been in uh, Las Vegas for 24 years. Uh, we are a full-time company. So this is what I do. It's my full-time gig. I have no other jobs, no other source of income comes in 
to uh, to this to to support me and my husband. And um, I am an avid networker. I belong to uh, NACE. I am a four time. Four time, four time. Four hang on, hang on. Back up, back up, back up. You're already making the quintessential presenter mistake. For people I know. who don't know what NACE is, NACE is the National Association for Catering and Event Professionals. There we go. So Thank you. I very am much. a four time, and I went into my wrestling mode there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Your Booker uh, T. My Booker T. I I won four <laughs> national NACE awards for my uh, productions. So, um, yeah, and I'm also the Las Vegas Wedding Professional of the Year by NACE, right. uh, voted on by the NACE chapter. Um, and I'm also part of the Las Vegas Wedding Chamber of Commerce, which is a brand new um, association here. And it's all about um, the image. We're, all, we're trying to upgrade the image of Vegas. Um, it's not Elvis <coughs> and, and little people and no girls and drunk people. You can actually have beautiful weddings here in Las Vegas. So I do membership for that. And then um, Las Vegas Hospitality Association, which is the LVHA, and they consist of over 400 people, 400 members that encompass everything Vegas. Um, okay. ho hotels, DMCs, destination management companies, everything Vegas. So everything Vegas hospitality. So, yep. So that's what I, that's what Very I am. Very cool. Excellent. Cammie, tell us about yourself. Okay. Well, uh, I'm Cami Stores with Sound Image Entertainment. My husband and I work together, own and operate it. It is also our full-time job. This is what we both do. Um, we have four boys, which is um, super A fun. A job in of itself. Yes. And yeah. then uh, let's see here. I, I belong to a bunch of places as well. I, I network as well quite a bit. Uh, one of the ones is Association for Wedding Professionals International or AFWPI. Um, I've served on their board of advisors multiple times, um, won a handful of awards from them, and then um, recently got more involved with NACE in our local chapter in Sacramento. I'm currently their vice president. Oh, and, nice. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. NACE was never top of my list. And I was like, you know what? I just want to expand my horizons. And NACE has been actually a lot of fun. So I've been enjoying learning more about NACE and got a handful of awards from our local chapter as well of member of the year and whatnot. Nice. And then um, I'm currently the president of our American Disc Jockey Association in the Sacramento chapter. Um, so that's good. been pretty fun. Been about two years I've been president for the for our guys here. And <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think other than that, that's kind of wraps us up in a nutshell you know, we love what we do and this is what we've been doing me for 14 years and Brandon for, I don't know, 20 something years. Wow. Good. Very good. Awesome. Excellent. So the reason I asked you guys to be on is because I'm also a big networker. Um, I know that Jody knows this, but my nickname was the mayor. And part of that was because I, I know tons and tons of people. And I yeah. am that guy that connects tons and tons of people. And, and it's always worked really well in my career. <clears throat> um, and the way that Jody and I even met was through Andy Ebon mm -hmm. um, connection. The way that I met you, Cammy, was through Randy Bartlett. And so, again, it's all about networking, 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 networking. And so, so that was that. Um, and so, I'm a big networker. I'm not since I've taken on the ownership of multiple roles. Um, I own multiple businesses now. It feels weird for me personally to go out and network is more so than ever because it's kind of like, I don't want you just to recommend my one company. I want you to recommend all four of my companies. <laughs> <clears throat> and because they're independent entities, it's not like I can walk in with a box of business cards and say, hi, I want to take over the whole remainder of your business card area here with all of my stuff. So, so it's a little bit different. Um, so that's kind of one of those things, but, uh, I am uh, quasi active in NACE, not nearly as active as I should be. Same thing with ILEA here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I um, had like my own local little networking group where we had one of everything in it, which is ultimately how I ended up buying one of the companies. And then um, networking wise, because of the bridal shows, um, I wound up networking like crazy through the bridal shows. And that's the one thing I tell people in my seminars all the time. When the fashion show starts, don't go run out to in and out burger or order pizza or what have you. That's your 40 minutes to sell yourself to the rest of the vendors and yeah. build relationships and network then because you have 
all of the time in the world because they're twiddling their thumbs the same way you are as the fashion show is going on if you're not a part of it. And so networking to me has always been key. And again, the companies that I've bought and the companies I've built have been primarily through networking as well as being a, you know, halfway different, halfway decent disc jockey, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, so that's that. I'm also the ADJ president here in Chicago. Um, and we meet the third Wednesday of every month. But for those of you watching, we actually pushed it back one week because of mobile beat and playing catch up. So we're going to be meeting this Wednesday and we're doing an, some improv training, uh, what hopefully will be the very last of the Las Vegas recaps. And then um, we have uh, Mark Bernison, who's going to be speaking to us via Skype. He's the Adirondack chapter president, and he has been doing the, I don't know if you know this, Jody, and, I, and I'm sure you know Cammy, but ADJ now has a partnership with Sandals Vacations. Oh, great. So you can now sell Sandals Honeymoons to your clients and so he's going to be walking the adj chapter through kind of the the abcs of that and and uh allow people to make even more money so so there's that <clears throat> so now that everybody knows who you are and we'll, we'll jump on networking in a second let's jump back to the last week so and uh i know that we're all over the age of 30 which means that uh, we remember everything that happened last week <laughs> so let's start with you jody what were your high moments what were some things that you would like to see done differently at different conferences or, or what have you, or things that you think are played out without mentioning too many specifics? Cause I don't, sure. I don't want to hear all about how I dog <laughs> and I'll be no. banned from, I don't know. I'll be banned from the city of Las Vegas. So well, I, I have a bodyguard for you. So if you do need a bodyguard, Casey, I do. Very have good. Friends okay. I got big daddy. Big daddy said he'll protect me. No, I got a better guy. I got rush. Okay. I got my gotcha. friend Rush. He'll take care, All of, right. take care of everything. Um, so I really enjoyed um, Terry Lewis. He was okay. In, he was from England. Yeah, I thought he was Arizona excellent. somehow. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, so. he was really good. He talked about you know uh, he, he how he's an. And this was a, it. Was a presentation at Mobile Beach just yes. the uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I thought he was polished. I thought he was very professional. Um, just lots of good advice for for anybody at any level. There was stuff for somebody like me who's been around for a while, and stuff to learn from uh, the new the new people. Um, so he was excellent. I thought he, well rounded. Um, I I can't think of any one specific takeaway, but okay. I just enjoyed his whole presentation. So uh -huh. um, he was good. Um, I also <clears throat> took some notes. Sonny Ganguly, you can't go wrong. I mean, right. I've heard. I've heard his speeches before because I was at Wedding Wire World, so I did catch this, but he was amazing. For those of you who don't know Sonny, you don't go to Wedding MBA and you don't go to Wedding Wire World, then you got a lot. He, he's he's always great. He's always um, got lots of great current statistics. Yeah, he does. Which are what's great about yep. how the internet's working, how social media is working. Um, <clears throat> Wedding Wire also just released a a survey based on 18,000 wedding couples. And so he referenced yes, that. Yes, it was great. Time. And that's that flying great. around uh, Facebook specifically because I've, I've seen it in my news feed two or three times. Yeah. And speaking of that, there was a very interesting article that ties into Stacey Nichols and her Pinterest seminar that she gave about Pinterest and how uh, also just to be clear, Stacy was a presenter at Mobile Beat. Yes. From yes. San Diego. Did yes. something specifically on social media via Pinterest. Yes. So on, right. And and the content that she gave was really <clears throat> supported by the content of the, of the Wedding Wire survey. So okay. the Wedding Wire survey came out right after she did her presentation on Pinterest saying how brides or how couples use Pinterest for inspiration and finding vendors. And uh, uh, as soon as she said that, wham, there was the Wedding Wire report, the newlywed report. Um, okay. And then, and then <clears throat> one thing I think that that um, Mobile Beat can do differently. I really wanted to hear this guy, Steve Clayton, talk about going from DJ to event producer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, he was he was uh, out of L.A. Yeah, I mean, because that's what I do. Festivals now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I wish that they would take... I'm not into festivals. I wish they okay. would have took 
from DJ to wedding planner or DJ to a, a wedding event producer or that kind of thing. Like what I do, right. what I'm doing now. I mean, I still DJ, but I also produce events. Okay. And I think that would have been better. I don't want to know about festivals or tech or anything like that. I think there was more takeaways for somebody like me and Cami and some of the other people in the audience to learn how to take what we're learning from DJing and bringing that over to actual event planning where you do have a DJ and a photographer and lighting and all <clears> that <throat> stuff. So, Got yeah. So okay. That, Very good. So kind of talking about transitions. Yeah. Is a possible topic for another show. All right. And Cami, well, how about you? So for me, um, I enjoyed Terry as well. It was funny. I was sitting there and I thought, wow, this is almost how I do everything that I do now. And I didn't, it's never really been taught. I mean, this is just kind of a natural thing for me, the way that he talks about the, the ways to, you know, run your business and things like that. And so um, I very much enjoyed Terry as well, Jody. Um, of course, I love Randy, but I always love seeing Randy. Of course. Randy. And so that mm. never gets old, but, um, I really enjoy Mike Walter. I always like seeing Mike. I always, and I thought he was just the best person to show on interactivity. I just finished my mobile beat survey today okay. and, uh, I had put on there that, um, you know, just like re- listening to him last year, I had thought interaction was for the cheesy DJs and, you know, that those types of things. And he really broke that down for me that it could be so much more. So I really always enjoy seeing him and, and Joe Bunn. Uh, Stevie Ray, I think, was one of my favorites. I Stevie think. Ray is great. I've seen yeah. him at another conference, at a private conference. He was awesome. Yeah, so I very much enjoyed Stevie Ray. Um, <clears throat> I, I really am not enjoying the one-track seminars. Um, Agree. Yeah, because I think when we when there's something that doesn't pertain to me or something I'm not really wanting to see, I kind of like my options are the showroom floor is not open, so my options are to leave or just sit there and do nothing, and it's easy to leave and then just not come back. And so I found myself leaving and doing other things than staying at the show, um, which was, um, you know, the whole point of why we're there. <laughs> and sure. so um, I put that in, in my feedback in the survey because I just like the multiple tracks, but I can understand, you know, having to have that all. Um, it's funny that you bring that up though, because that seemed to be a theme in of itself this year. Um, <clears throat> when I talked to people and I said, how were the, how was the, sem- how was the show? How was the seminars? There were very few people that I talked to that had gone to like more than four seminars the whole yeah. show. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me okay. Too. Yeah. And, and I was one of the ones that left on the hike that you were mentioning. I was like, yeah, I went on the hike because, you know, right. there wasn't oh, wow. anything that- in that time frame that I was like, well, it's, I'm not going to miss anything there. Okay. Um, so you, so based on what I think I had heard on Tuesday when the show floor opened and it seemed like there were more sponsored workshops. Um, by some of the manufacturers, that's where you right. didn't have any kind of down. workshops. So, so you cut out and went hiking. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would, can, and I was at the UFC. And you yes, uh, yeah, because some of our guys were like, "I got to get off this mountain by a certain time to make it back to the UFC." <laughs> UFC. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And so, um, I did end up over at the Photo Booth Expo showroom floor, which um, I actually really liked. Uh, yes. I mean, being a DJ, we're most used to DJ showroom floors where it's just right. loud all the time. Um, yeah. Fine. That's kind of what we're used to, but it was a very different feel walking into a different showroom floor and like, oh, it doesn't have to be loud and dark all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I enjoyed that. I love the idea of buying props and being able to take them right then. Sure. Um, I'm totally an impulse buyer, so that's totally my thing. So I was like, you know, yes. You know. We should have props at the show, but I understood the food booth expo was going on. So like if they had to choose where to showcase, it made sense at the yeah. show, at the photo booth expo. Well, but I ended up buying a bunch of props there. I enjoyed that a lot um, and enjoyed just being able to walk around and see the different things. I came by your booth, but you weren't there. So yeah, that's what I had heard. I don't know. Yeah. I think I was presenting actually. Oh, gotcha. I, I did a seminar on Monday at uh, about bridal show success. Uh-huh. And then I did a workshop on Wednesday and uh, as you guys know, all the workshops that I ever do that are paid for, all the money goes toward my toy drive at Christmas. Yes. So, that's awesome. so that's where what I choose to do. So you may have come in on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I actually believe that I passed a kidney stone Wednesday morning while I was in Vegas. <laughs> that's Ooh. terrible. And uh, it oh, was no. it was a horrible, painful thing. Oh. I was uh, in horrible pain. Rod Randall is not much of a nursemaid. I'll call you a roommate. <laughs> So um, he just oh. kept dancing and laughing. Um, oh it's probably God. like rooming with Randy Bartlett, actually. But um, <laughs> it was uh, it was not good. And then uh, 
for ibuprofen actually kind of took the edge off and uh that was that but i really thought i was going to be taking a trip to the er on wednesday morning and i flew the red eye home wednesday night so i was thinking i was going to be not making it back (laughs) wow so so i'm glad it worked out but yeah no i think i think with mobile b um i enjoyed it overall it was it was it wasn't over the top production was down a little bit this year with not having Jeremy do it. I felt like we kept gaining momentum and then um, it kind of just you okay. know, fell flat. Um, so that was one thing that I noticed, but I think I'm also pretty critical of speakers and presenters because of who I have in my Sacramento market, you know, and sure. they're, you know, Randy and Mike are always having us, Mike Anderson and, and Randy Bartlett are always having us critique them and seeing what they're missing and things like that. And so right. the way you present and what you say on the microphone uh, very much impacts Right. Whether I stay or whether I go. Um, so yeah, I, I expect a level of professionalism when you're presenting on a national stage. So and, and I gotta be honest with you, I kind of felt very disrespected. I don't know if you did too. I'm a New Yorker. Nothing could offend me. <laughs> and I hang out with a lot of guys. This right. year, Cammy, the F bombs, the yeah, I'm not gonna say that. it. I mean, come on. <clears throat> right. I feel like if that's all you can, if that's all is that you can have in your repertoire to speak, I just feel like I can't take you professionally, you know? And yeah. and I, I get it when there's a line and it feels, you know, it, it makes sense and it's part of the joke and it's part sure. of the, you know, I get that. But when it's like every three words, I'm just like, all right, well. I think part of that is the Gary Vaynerchuk mentality. But and you're not Gary Vaynerchuk. That's what I was going to say. When, <laughs> right. So yeah, but he doesn't do it all the time and he has a purpose for what he's saying. Uh, right. No, he does it all the time. I love Gary. <laughs> but, I met but, him in Social Media Examiner. Did you? And, that's uh, Gary style. Yeah. I know. That's Gary style. That's not your style. Develop your own style. Just like when we talk about DJing. I don't want everybody to be carbon copies of me. And Cammy, you're probably the same way. And Casey, yep. be yourself. Take- yeah. Take some of what you learned from me and make it your own. And you I think part of it was just like, I'm coming down and it's like, whether you like me or not, I don't even care. And exactly. I feel like that's a very negative um, way to start a presentation. So either way, but some people I heard loved the different presentations like that and they liked yeah. how real it was. So, you know, there's something for everybody there. Um, sure. It really just depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I have a mouth of a truck driver. I mean, my mouth is really, really bad. Um, you guys have known me, Cammy, not so much you, but Jody has definitely heard me drop f bomb after f bomb, and but never on the microphone, yeah, ever. You, just, you did say just once, though, them. somebody was popping a baby out of their vagina. That yes, was- <laughs> and here's the funniest part about that. Here, let me, let me. So I'm talking about. I was like, oh. Wait, this is this is the best part. So this is involves Randy Bartlett. Oh no. So. I'm giving my seminar, and if you've ever spoken in front of a group and you start to get tongue twisted, five seconds feels like an hour, and you feel like the whole room has stopped, and they're staring at you, and they're like, what is wrong with you, dude, right? And it was pretty early on speaking at Mobile Beat, and I was talking about how building and developing a business plan is like a baby growing in the womb and then is delivered out the womb. And I couldn't remember the word womb. Oh and all of a sudden, I'm like, uh, 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 when a baby's delivered out the vagina. <laughs> now, here's the best part. Randy Bartlett is sitting in the front row. He crosses his arms like this, <laughs> looks at me and goes, vagina? <laughs> vagina. Vagina, <laughs> and that's <coughs> vagina. <laughs> so it totally screwed me up even more. So that was in dis- that was in like February. He's speaking in August at DJ Times, not nearly as large of a room. I'm sitting in the front row. He's in the middle of talking, and he's, you know, one percent solution this, one percent solution that. He likes size with me, and I look at him and I go, vagina. <laughs> And he just is like, totally, it was like I hit him in the head with a two by four, <laughs> totally shut down the end. And I'm like, ah, oh. so, but yes, but I, again, I think presentation wise, you, you have to watch your P's and Q's and Andy Ebon, he, he says it to me all the time. People who use profanity are just lazy. And I totally 100% agree. 
every time I drop an F-bomb, it's, I think back on it and I go, I could have phrased things a lot differently and, sure. and definitely delivered the same point. So, sure. so um, here's, here's my observation, because I obviously, for political reasons, wasn't allowed to go. Here's what was interesting to me, and, I, and I've talked to Jody about this. Usually, especially with the f- times that I've missed Mobile Beat, I see John Doe on stage, and there's like 30 people who have taken pictures of John Doe, and they're, excuse me, they are um, posting like, John Doe's killing it. John Doe's seminar on ABC is amazing. You know, oh my God, I'm, this, this seminar was totally worth it. The weird part about it is Randy Bartlett, Vanilla Ice, <laughs> definitely the two top trending things on on Facebook for me. Right. There was some chatter about Mike Walter. There was some chatter about Joe Bunn. There was some chatter about Jason Clock. I heard nothing about Todd Mitchum. I heard nothing about um, Jason Weldon. I heard nothing about pumpkin plan, the pumpkin plan man. What about Jan? Um, Jan, I heard like one or two things, but not really any chatter. I mean, Jan, I overall there was, but the funny part was Jan is a branding machine, so he was posting a lot of his own stuff. Yes, right. but it wasn't yeah. a lot of people going Jan is killing it. Now it could be very much like Disney World. The second, third, fourth time you've been there, it's not the same level of excitement. Right. I'm wondering if it was just because we're lazy and we're just so tired of having to pump out content and stuff like that. Because I usually post quite a bit and always try to post up my friends and stuff like that. But I just was like <clears throat> not interested. So I'm wondering if how much of that was just, you know, I didn't even want to post overloaded with social media type stuff, you know? Yeah. Tuesday night, I went to dinner with 11 other people. And one of the people that was with us, he, it was like he was addicted to taking pictures. <laughs> and, and I was seriously like, dude, can we just sit and eat? And maybe it's just that I like steak more than I like having my picture <laughs> there. But but it was interesting. So yeah. that was that. So um, you know, I was at Photo Booth Expo the whole time. That show is enormous. I can't get over how big and how many different versions of photo booth props. Yeah, two, two rooms, rooms, but I mean, there was a guy who restores Volkswagen buses, uh, airline trailers. There was, there was a driving um, photo booth. I don't know if you yeah. saw that. A little yeah, remote I saw one. that. Yeah, that all was kind I of... kept thinking is like a bridesmaid climbing on top of it and breaking it into a million pieces. <laughs> I mean, so I started looking at that. There's a uh, Danny Brewer had a handheld one that you could yes, very literally cool. hold up. So that was like the new There's thing. There's one being passed around <laughs> during Vanilla Ice. It had a ring on it with like an iPad that they were passing that's, around. That's Danny contract. Brewer's, yeah. So... So there's that. Now, Vanilla Ice actually looked like he was seriously uh, well-received. I mean, Pete Yeah, he was, seemed pretty inspirational. Like, every between each break, he'd start, you know, spitting out some inspirational stuff and, like, follow your dream type stuff. And um, he seemed to be excited to be here, where the last time he didn't seem as excited to be there. I didn't see him, whatever, 10 years ago. Yeah. And so, so, but, uh, but this one, he seemed pretty excited, and people were excited. It looks like the Photo Booth Expo group was allowed to come over for that as well yeah. from it's what about, i saw the room was crowded it was um yeah. but he reminded me of a bar mitzvah mc he's jumping up and down on the stage yeah. with everybody else and mm-hmm. you know short of handing out glow in the dark necklaces i kind of felt like i was watching a mitzvah <clears throat> and i would say rob Frey was the bar mitzvah boy so, <laughs> I mean, he was definitely front and center and you know what's great about seeing rob if you haven't seen the video guys he just was genuinely having a great time like, oh yeah, he was that's just Rob. totally yeah. into it. So, yep. so that's what I liked. Okay, so we've recapped uh, Vegas. Um, so let's talk now about networking. So, I would imagine that there's websites anybody could Google. It's probably what nace.net, nace.org, uh, nace.net, nace.net. Nace. So if you want to see if there's a nace chapter in your local market, um, Las Vegas obviously would have its own. AFWPI, I think, has a AFWPI.org, right? Or maybe it's dot com. com. I think it's dot it's com. Richard Markell's group, yes? Yeah, I can drop the link in there. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so the biggest thing, though, is to uh, to kind of check out your area. And uh, you can go as a guest. 
generally once and see what it's like. And every market's different. So when I first started going to ILEA, it was called ISIS. And I used to say that it was the beggars and the braggers. And it was mostly event planners. And that was pre-social media. We're talking like the early 90s. And they used to, like, everybody had pictures of their latest event. And you'd see this over-the-top event. So it was the event planners showing other event planners what they had just done, kind of like the bragging. Uh And then there were the guys like me that were begging to get in the door to do these events. And, And here's the thing. And just so that nobody has any misunderstandings, going to network events is not like a bridal show, okay? You are not, those people that are there aren't necessarily looking to hire your DJ service or a DJ service. It comes from months and months and sometimes years of people seeing you and you being involved and getting involved before the the right situation comes up and and you are now in a place where you can serve them. Um, I worked with a very large event planner, very young in my career, <clears throat> felt that they were overly demanding, told them, I don't want your business. You're too much of a pain. Years went by and through social media and the owner and I having similar, similar views on politics and life, he, we found ourselves talking some more. And then he said to me, he goes, you know, we're not happy with who we're using. Would you come in and, and talk to our staff? Absolutely. And that was like seven years later. So if you guys go to a meeting, the last thing you want to do is shove yourself down someone's throat like it's a bridal show. Do you guys agree? Agree. Yeah, that's yeah. always our biggest thing when we actually have for AWPI like a um, welcoming packet and we have like a um, opening seminar for the beginners to kind of let them know, like, if you want this to be successful, you have to get involved, join on the board or join one of the um, committees or things like that, help plan one of the events, like, you know, coming and being like, this is, this is me, refer me, refer me, never goes well. Um, But yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, you got to get involved. Um, That's why they give me a bunch of awards. All my awards are, are just that I like to give up my free time as much as possible. That's what those mean. So. All right. So what do you think, Jody? Agreed. You just can't pay your, and these expenses, these are expensive memberships, folks. Mm-hmm. Right. These are not like $100 memberships. They're close to $400 to be a right. member in one of these associations. And for you to just squander that $400, you're, you, you got to get involved. You got to show up. You got to show up all the time, you know, show up every month because you know, people have to see you. A perfect example, we had an event in November. It's our annual um, gala for our local chapter of NACE. And, you know, I'm the only DJ in the group. And then a, a DJ just joined. So we got okay. another DJ. I gave him, I, I said, dude, this is your opportunity. You just joined. You should DJ the gala. The gala. He did. Okay. And I haven't seen him since oh, he hasn't terrible. been to one meeting since november <clears throat> yeah come on yeah. dude really I've been, yeah i've been very blessed every christmas i've been asked to be the auctioneer for the nace chicago holiday party and uh, they do a dessert auction so you and your table actually bid on different cakes and that's your dessert that you share with the table Nice. And all of the money goes to the Greater Food Depository. So it's really sure. cool. So I want to go to that one. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> if yeah. you reach out to anybody from Chicago, they'll tell you all the details. Because all the bakeries donate the cakes. And then it's fun and it's cool. And uh, and that was that. In we fact, did the uh, we did the buttercream ball here in Vegas. The buttercream ball. Okay. That was interesting. Pretty cool. mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So next month we have the NACE ISIS Awards. It's called the NICE Awards. But... Oh. Now I don't know what it is because it's Ilea, but um, who knows? But it's one of the biggies. It's it's one of the biggies for sure. We have, we have Ilea in the Bay Area over here. So that's our closest chapter or group, gotcha. however that is. So Yeah, we have Ilea here, but – and this gets back to our networking conversation. The reason why I don't do Ilea is because I'm so well-known in NACE. Okay. I kind of feel weird getting so involved in Ilea when I'm so involved in NACE. You know what I'm saying? It's just – they compete here. 
It's very well. Here's the here's the other thing. You only have so many hours in the day. Yes. And so that's the tough part. Not everybody's fortunate enough to have a husband that takes care of their kids like Cammy does. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. (laughs) I'm totally kidding. I don't know, but we used to split up our networking, and then we just found like it wasn't as productive. Where because nobody likes your husband. (laughs) <laughs> because everybody loves him. No, that's what everybody asks. Like, where's Brandon? Where's Brandon? I'm like, what am I, chopped liver? Like, I do all the work, but they don't care. They just want to see Brandon because, I don't know, he's so cute or something. But yeah. no, we, we, both, no. <laughs> we both go to all of the networking events now. But I felt the same way about AFWPI and NACE. I was serving on both their boards for a little bit. Um, and I just felt like I – not that they – conflict at all but they're very different types of things you get different different feels for these different groups that you go to and NACE was just this higher caliber um, in our area at least it feels like it's a higher caliber of professionals and um, people that I work more often with and network with and um, AWPI we meet a lot of new people lots of lots of new people coming in which is great because they need the you know vendors that have been around for a long time to show them where the bar is at Um, but yeah so we, we have our groups but you know there's always new groups popping up and I just, yeah. like there's a gazillion of them. And sure. uh, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I've been noticing that like a lot of the younger professionals don't really want to tie themselves to a group. They don't want to no. be part of an association. They don't want to be branded. by. <clears throat> they just don't want to participate. In. And I just keep thinking about how, if we didn't have the, the vendors before us that came and paved the way and, yeah. and gave all the energy, time and energy to, you know, get us to where we are, you know, exactly. we keep carrying that on. And I'm not finding that for whatever reason with a lot of younger vendors. I don't know if that's the same for you guys. I don't know. Um, I self admittedly find myself with all these young uh, urban hipsters at uh, <laughs> events. And all I keep thinking about is when I was in my twenties and I saw the people my age that I was like, God, look at these stuff. <laughs> I can't stand these people. Right. And now I'm the opposite way. And I'm like, this dude's carrying an umbrella open inside wearing sunglasses. <laughs> I, I just want to throat punch him. Wow. I guess I really do. <laughs> but it's That's just frowned it's, upon. That's frowned upon. Me, apparently. God, you throat punch one person, you're off the referral list. <laughs> but you know what? I wish. I wish I really understood networking when I was in my 20s. Yeah. yeah. I feel that if I knew networking that I'd be in a much bigger and better place than I am now. Honestly, gotcha. I think I would have made even more connections and yeah. So for all those millennials that are watching us, you guys need to network. You, you definitely well, I think millennials in general have to understand that there's networking outside of social media and LinkedIn. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a really big deal. Yeah. Um, and then part of it is this, and this is the number one thing, and this is a tough part for a lot of people. The number one thing that people like to talk about more than anything else is themselves. 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 And you, in order to penetrate and really make a difference, you need to all at, introduce yourself and then say, Cammy. so I see your name tag says that you are with dot, dot, dot. Tell me about your company. Right. And if it feels like it could be somebody you'd want to do business with, the next thing would be to ask that person for coffee um, or for lunch and then just, and then just kind of, get to know them better. Right. Uh, so we, we did start networking when we were in our twenties, but that's cause we have good friends who uh, Doug Levine and Dara Harmon here in Sacramento took us under their wing. And she like got me signed up for all these committees. It was insane. I should never have been on that many committees, but she's like, let's do it all. And she threw, threw me into it and I loved it. And I, I saw the purpose of it and just kind of ran with it. And so I'm grateful for that. Cause if I didn't have them and Mike Anderson and Randy Bartlett just kind of taking us under their wing and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know where we'd be. So networking has been the you know foundation of our business for us. Sure. So now for everybody watching, NACE primarily tends to be your vendors, like DJs, photographers, limousines, caterers, people like that. And then it happens to be a lot of venue directors or directors of catering or mm-hmm. catering sales managers. So it's a terrific way for you to meet people to earn a position on their preferred vendor list. And you have to understand that in order to get, you're going to have to give. And I think that's the most important thing just because you're in the same group or whatever does not entitle you to anything other than the opportunity to say hello and meet that person and say, you know, what's going on? How are you? How are things? And, and kind of go from there. So, so there's that. Um, I, Leah, tends to be more special event professionals, less venues, but more DMCs, more uh, uh, 
event planners and event then production. Yeah, event production. a lot of your linen Matt company. Matt Radicelli is very company. big. Rock the House. Matt Radicelli was the president of the right. uh, Cleveland chapter. So. Yeah. So the, and they win lots of ILEA <laughs> awards. Right. And you know the awards are great and all, but really what your what your award is is the relationship um, that you earn because. As fantastic as your plaque is, that's great, but I'd rather have one solid um, relationship with somebody come out of it. So, um, well, you're talking when you talk about the local awards, yeah, that's that's but when you win a national mm -hmm. award like the NACE National Awards, yeah, Casey, those are hard. That's that's not somebody showing a book of pictures and saying, look at this great event I did at the link in Las Vegas. I mean, right. there's essays that need to be, this is like yes, a thesis. This is a lot of work to win. This, is a, th work. this is a yeah. thesis. Like after you submit, when you, when you hit that send button, after you do your NACE submission, right. I've never given birth, but it's like <laughs> giving birth. It's, 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 it's hard. It's like passing so, a kidney stone. I understand. It, it, yeah. It, <laughs> It's it's nothing to sneeze at these national I these national. I'm not I'm not putting them down at all. Yeah, you yeah. Know, no, I just want you to know. You know, um, she's like I worked hard for that. You better so, respect yeah. that, Casey. Three times. I went the easy route and became best friends with Randy, and he got me a national award. So that's how I got mine. But yeah, Nace is no joke. Okay. Yeah, Nace right. is no, a joke. Either it's Ilea or Wipa. Not, know, it's Whippa, no, I'm not. I'm not putting down any awards. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Please. <laughs> no. Some, Good God! Tomorrow morning, what's Casey's problem with Nace? I was going, no, there's no problem. <laughs> he's, he's, at all. Got he's just better. He didn't get any. That's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Who won the Peter Mary Award before you, Cammy? <laughs> Whoa! Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Who started the Flame of Inspiration Award that you won, Jody? Okay. So, right. right. Anyhow. That's a hard Yes. So anyhow, now we've got a DJA and, um, you know, a lot of DJs foolishly don't want to network with each other. Yes. So they don't think there's any value in working together. Yes. And depending on your personalities, like I get that. And, and let's use someone that's been current, like Byron Gunter. I don't know in his market exactly how much networking he would do with other DJs. Um, or how well liked he is and not because of anything he's necessarily done, but just his overall persona and stuff. I was never really well liked in Chicago for a long time because of the fact, can we try to hold back your laughter? Um, I, I can't even imagine how nobody could not like you. Casey. Yeah, I, don't know. I understand. My mom thinks the same thing. <laughs> my dad doesn't like me, but my mom loves me. <laughs> but the thing about it was I always was, and always have been definitely a go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it kind of a guy. And so mm -hmm. I ended up being disliked by other DJs who didn't even know me. In yeah. fact, I'll tell you a really quick story. I was at a Mark Farrell event before a mobile beach Chicago once, like this got to be 15 years ago. And the guy who later became the ADJ president of Chicago, a friend of mine owned a DJ supply store and he was one of the sponsors they ran to McDonald's real quick and they said, Hey, would you watch all of our stuff? So I was in my softball uniform and we were called cheaters. And so I had nothing on me that said that I owned spin and discs entertainment. Oh, wow. So he comes up to me and, and I jokingly started going into the car sales and we've got mirror balls and fog juice and please beacons. And what can I get you? And he goes, Oh, you don't even know. I'm the reason that your lights are on. I said, well, you know what? Mike and Nordy just ran to go get some food at McDonald's. They'll be right back. My job is to make sure you don't steal anything. So please don't take anything. Like, cause I really don't want to chase you. And like, that was our job. <laughs> and so he and I start talking and he starts telling me about how <clears throat> Mark Farrell inspired him to raise his rates. So he could have a more livable wage, which I think is wonderful. Okay. And then he says, yeah, he goes, cause you know, if you don't know what it's like, it's really hard competing against these big scumbag multi-op multi -op companies. And I'm like, scumbag multi-op companies? What are you talking about? And he turns around <clears throat> and says, um, oh boy. and I said, what are you talking about? He goes, well, these big companies that they'll do any job for any price. They're nothing but a bunch of whores. And I said, like, who? <laughs> and he goes, like spinning discs. Oh. And I'm looking right at him and I realize 
he doesn't know me. And I'm going, wait, what? And he goes, yeah. He goes, that guy will do any party for any price. And I said, you know this for a fact? And he goes, yeah. I go, have you ever, like, met the owner? No. Oh, boy. And I said, so, have you, like, I understand he speaks to conferences and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just to appease his ego. Okay. So I let him talk shit about me for however long. And then one thing leads to another. They come back from McDonald's. I go, you know what? I got to go. I go, it was a pleasure to meet you. What was your name? And he said his name, which I won't repeat. I said, my name's KCA on Spin and Disc Entertainment. Oh. And you could pretty much see him make doo doo in his pants because I won't use profanity and walked away. You can't just say you won't use profanity when you just use it, Casey. <laughs> I said doo doo. <laughs> Before that. Did I? Did I drop one? Okay. <laughs> Well, did I really? Yes. Oh, that's a big deal. Yes, you did, Casey. <laughs> okay. Thank you, God. The voice of God had let you know. <laughs> um, so wow. the interesting thing was like, it was one of the reasons I always stayed away. And then I became for- friends with Drax on a personal level. And he asked me to help out in Chicago and I got more involved. And I have to tell you, like my, what I have gotten from, being involved with Chicago was so incredibly rewarding in a totally different way yeah. where I don't necessarily know that I've gotten one piece of business from it, but I've been able to pick up the phone like Matt Windsor, for example, unbelievably nice guy before he sold his company. He used to do um, vinyl wrapping for dance floors. And I asked him if he would be willing to do some vinyl wrapping for this dance floor for our winter, our toys for tots drive to make it look like an ice skating rink. And I said, can I work something out with you and, you know, pay you for your materials? Like, can I do it at cost? And he was kind enough to donate his services and that. So the room was beautiful, the whole thing. And and the ADJ Chicago has stepped up huge the last three years with my toy drive. And so they're helping out the community. And again, it has nothing to do with me or selling them bridal show booths or, or tickets to a, a DJ show. It just, it just be a part of being in the, com- in the community and, and helping and talking and, and uh, getting ideas from them and giving ideas to them. So, so it's yeah. worked out well. The, well you, I, you, go ahead, Jody. Well, you raise the bar when you do that. You're raising the bar on your industry. Well, I'm trying. So I'm definitely trying. And, you know, I hope more people come out and join us at our meetings. Yeah, Brandon was when we would split up our networking. ADJ was always Brandon's thing. And so I would do the NACE thing. He would do ADJ. We both did API And about two, a little over two and a half years ago, Randy called me and he asked me to join the ADJ and and take on the role as president in our local chapter because we were in the, we were at a point where it was either we dissolve the chapter wow. or we call in personal favors is really where it was at. Like our chapter almost dissolved. And so I said, we were in the same spot. Right. And uh, <laughs> because I can't say no to Randy, I said, sure, that sounds like a great idea. And so I took on the president role in the two last two and a half years. I mean, we're up to about 22 guys or something like that. And right. it's been such a great experience for me. I've taken a lot of DJs that aren't members of ADJ out to lunch just to learn, you know, why they're not or what their conflicts are or things like that. So I can address it and just have a better understanding of both sides of why people are there and why they're not there. Um, and, and our group of guys are seriously the best. Like good. I look forward good to lucky. our ADJ meetings and That's nice. uh, we've done good a lot of good, good things luck. together. You know, we've done fundraisers together. We've raised money for Shriners. Like it's, right. It's yeah. been a pretty awesome experience. So people are really missing out when they aren't coming to DJ meetings. I mean, right. they we are. Have, we have nothing in Vegas at all. Nothing. We can't Time be to... in the same room together. We really can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm really? telling the truth. We don't like each other. We oh, that's the worst. There's, there's a handful of us that do. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a handful of us that do that like it, but uh, mostly it's the new people. Like I try to meet a lot of new DJs and I try to, you know, network with them. Um, I met a great DJ who now does some work for me, who is doing stuff on his own and he's watching Kenny DJ smash. Um, <laughs> I have another DJ that, you know, is a new guy and he was doing things on his own and he still does stuff on his own. And his name is angel. And he was great. I'd love to get us together. And we've talked about it um, and, and, and do something. I would, I'd really like to see it happen for us. Yeah. Great. But somebody has to do it. Right. You know, Cammy, yep. somebody, I somebody does. 
I don't have the time. I right. I, and my husband is not going to do it. So forget <laughs> that. I sat with him at dinner one night while we were in Vegas. And yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So Eric Eager came on uh, YouTube and said, who doesn't like KC? I'm shocked. See? <laughs> We See, love people like me. They just don't understand me. I don't know. People on Facebook are are tearing you up. So are they? Oh, are they? Randy and Brandon, but they're kind of the worst. So oh. I'd expect that from them. <laughs> yeah, Randy Bartley can't even spell his last name correctly. So. <laughs> he is getting a little old, so <clears throat> that's why he's winning all these awards now. <laughs> that's true. Well deserved, Randy. My well gosh. deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> Hmm. You know what comes after the uh, Mobile Beat Hall of Fame award, right? <laughs> the tombstone. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one that thinks that, Randall. Uh, I'm not the only one. There we go. So, um, no. So, I have to say, like, I have found uh, ADJ to be extremely rewarding. I have found my small networking groups to be extremely rewarding. And, and let's all be honest, because we've all been in leadership positions before. Even going back to my fraternity house days, there were the people that would do anything with you and for you. Mm -hmm. So if you were up till three in the morning stuffing stuff or getting out a mailer or doing whatever, they were right there next to you. If then there were people that couldn't manage to return an email or a phone call, there were people that only showed up for the fun parts of the job. And then there were the ones who, you know, they would pay the dues. You'd never even see them. So that's just part of it. So as long as you go into it knowing what's what, then then I think you have, exp you know, a reasonable set of expectations. You so, got to show up. People, you got to go all in. If you're going to spend four, and I talked about this with John before on one of his shows. If you're going to spend the money, you got to go all in. I don't want to hear you as a membership chair. And Cami, I don't know if you've ever done membership. Have you ever had the membership chair part? No, I don't want to do uh, that. Okay. <laughs> I, I got I got to be honest with you, Cami. It's the best out of all the roles that you can take on. Membership is the best one because you get to meet everybody you get to meet everyone, yeah. and you have access to everybody. Like here in Vegas, when I first took over as membership chair, I knew that summers in Vegas are slow. So I used my NACE membership chair position to go meet with the Venetian, to go meet with um, the Mirage, to go meet with the MGM, because I knew that they would take my appointment. If I said, hey, I'm Jody with NACE, and then I have a conversation with them. And then later on, they'd be like, so what do you do? You know, I'd be like, well, I own sight and sound events. I DJ video. Oh my God, do you have a card? That that opens so many doors for me. You cannot even, yeah. I can't even tell you how many. Well, there's a common bond there. And because yeah. you're willing to commit yourself financially and time-wise, they're putting you in a different position than some random stranger walking through the door. And yeah, because they don't like random strangers showing up at their door. <laughs> Right. Hell no. so, if you're going to network, Cammie, don't do that. Uh, Mike Anderson said that Cammy has made an amazing chapter. <laughs> so, so beautiful. It's because the guys, so it's, it's them. It's not me. I'm just the facilitator. They're, they're pretty great. Um, let's see. Does Jackie News wants to know how much Casey paid Eric to say nice things about him? Thanks for that, John. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, DJ Stefan uh, says that most DJs in Vegas do indeed hate each other, although Thank he's you. friends with a few. Mm -hmm. um, Eric Yeager, we need to bring meetings to the south side of Chicago. We did that and nobody came, so <laughs> we tried to have a halfway point. And I'm sorry that you've chosen to live in Indiana, but <laughs> that's, that. that's true. I don't know. So. I'm always really sad um, to hear that there's so many places that just have DJs that just hate each other. I'm right. like, I'll come hang out with you guys. I will show you that we can all get along. <laughs> but yeah, I hear that a lot. Yeah, it's sad. It really is. It's, yeah. uh, it's sad. And when we first came into the DJ market, my company, like 24 years ago, we did have a DJ network. And I'll be honest with you, it rocked because yeah. there were people in our network that didn't do bar mitzvahs, that don't do school dances. Um, and, and they would trade off jobs like, oh, I don't do mitzvahs and I got this mitzvah call. I know you do it. Hey, I don't do high school dances. I know you do it. So there's opportunity for everybody. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. I miss it. 
Uh, Randy Bartlett puts fear, false evidence appearing real, which is why DJs avoid each other. So, um, yeah. And now it just says I've got insufficient permission to for the specified page. I don't know what happened there. Apparently, John must have kicked me out of this checking news already. I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Randy says I'll just read my name off this Hall of Fame plaque. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. So, and I agree, Randy is well deserved. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was supposed to win the Peter Mary Award, as he said that I stole his award. I wrote this beautiful, like, three page essay. I did a slideshow. It was magical. But he said I must be a crappy writer because his was better and I won. So I don't know. I, I wrote one for him, too. Did you? I, I said we should give it to him before he dies. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, I sold like 30 years to win. Wow. It. He doesn't. So, yeah. Wow. No, uh, I actually just wrote an article called The Retirement of uh, Randy Bartlett for uh, next month's issue of uh, Distracting News. Nice. And I've got a great picture of him from 1988 looking like Tom Selleck in a tuxedo <laughs> distracting. So uh, hopefully John will go ahead and put that uh, in as one of the photographs. So. Not very often we get to see DJs retire from this industry. You know, they either go out of business or go away or, you know, and so it's exciting to know that that's an option. This can be a real, real career. Like you can do this lifelong. So, well, according to somebody at Mobile Beat who said, if you're over 50, you uh, be- no. <laughs> now there's a perfect example of, again, you can call it like the Trump versus Clinton versus Obama. It's not, what you say but it's how you say it and people have been told me that i could deliver things differently because mike walter said something almost identical to what byron said which is that a 29 to 30 year old bride is not going to find a 50 year old disc jockey quite as appealing as they would find another 30 year old disc jockey appealing and i think we can all agree with that yeah where the older disc jockey has to perhaps maintain their physical shape to be more physically appealing, but they can use their experience over somebody in their thirties. Byron was far more blunt and just said, bottom line is nobody wants you. At least this is what I've been told by multiple. Allegedly. 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 (laughs) Well, I can tell you, Casey, you know, just speaking from my experience, I had a younger DJ on my team. He was in his early 20s and he used to come back frustrated on Saturday nights because he felt like he got no respect from his couples. And that's also something Mike Walter did speak about on his podcast, how the younger DJs have a lot a harder time being like more credible. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I remember uh, being a young DJ spinning 50s tunes and back in the day when they did 50s parties for northwest side of chicago's church parishes i'd have people looking at me i was like 19 20 21 and they're like you don't know our music yeah and yeah. my yeah. dad was addicted to do up in motown so i sure. knew all of it and so they're like how do you know the platters i'm like i'm old no like <laughs> I, I knew it. like i knew the platters i knew do up i knew motown and it was because that's what my parents loved listening to. So right. was able that's to also where it. it's nice to have that DJ network. So you can refer things out that you don't feel comfortable with. I just Absolutely. referred something out to a friend of ours. It's a big lighting job, but they also want a DJ. But it's anyways, I referred it directly to him because we weren't available. And, you know, there's yeah. just, there's a DJ for everybody. And some of them yeah. have specialties and, you know, it, it works. And yeah, it's, I think it, it is. <laughs> it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Absolutely. No, I, I yeah. totally agree. And I think that Mike and Gunter were saying, Byron right. were saying the same thing, but very, very differently. Right. So, and and I, think that, I think that my, Byron had a good message. I think he did. I think he, he did. Met, yeah, but it was really hard to follow along when it was kind of like, F y'all, I don't even care, you know? Right. So, right. Well, and, he I think very, that, and he was very charming. I mean, I met him after. Um, you know, I met him afterwards, um, at late at night when I was hanging out by the hotel and he was very charming. He was extremely charming. He stuck out his hand. He shook my hand. He was, he was a very charming person. Uh, Matt Radicelli just came out and said, how many DJs do you refer in your market and how many refer you now? Uh, I can say firsthand, I refer Howard Wallach, um, Mars Lawhorn and Jasmine, every bar mitzvah inquiry I get because it's just something I don't want to do any longer. Um, 
at all. So that's not even a, a, a thing of availability. And um, I work with Jasmine's company all the time and, and as well as Mars's. So they both exhibit with me. I bought Mars's truck from him. Uh, we bought, we borrowed photo booths from each other back and forth. Now we were friends before ADJA, but again, it still goes back to the same premise of networking. You know, I met Mars many, many years ago at a showcase. Jasmine and I were one booth apart at a showcase and the middle booth that separated us never showed up. So she looked at me and I looked at her and she goes, you fill it, your half of the table with extra That's brochures cool. <laughs> and I'll fill it with air. And this was a dead, like a dead showcase. We wow. both started talking about how much we enjoy playing softball. Mm-hmm. The next thing I knew, I invited her to come out and play with our team and her and I just became friends and, you know, she's a bestie of mine now. So, so it totally works. So, and, and we've been friends ever since. So uh, DJ Stefan, we refer about four or five other companies depending on who would fit them best. Okay. So it's good to know that, you know, there's a lot of DJs that are indeed referring people. Cammy, do you, Cammy, you refer, right? Because you're in that office environment, correct? Right. So we have an office of four DJ companies in our office. We all have our mm-hmm. own um, office and then we have a showroom that we share and looking for the office. The whole point of it was to find a space that we can have our monthly ADJ meetings. We're like, we need okay. a big enough space where we can have the guys housed here because we want them to feel like, you know, this is there. So yeah, I mean, we refer heavily within the office, obviously. Um, and then among our ADJ members, I mean, there's a handful that I specifically refer for specific events. And then we have a leads group as well in Sacramento that we refer on. And so, you know, we got a good dozen to dozen and a half DJs we're referring all the time and we don't work Sundays. Are so, you, are you all as single ops? Are you all single ops in your building? Um, yeah. Doug and Dara have two people, two DJs that can work out from under them, but Mike's single op, we're sing- it's just me and Brandon and then Randy. And so, and he'll be retiring out. But yeah, I mean, people think it's insane to have four DJ companies sharing an office space, but we love it. It's great. Now, have you ever had yeah. the same customer walk in for two companies? We have. We have. have. Absolutely. And, and we all understand is. that we all have very different personalities. If you've met us all, we're all very different. And so I think it works really well because we understand if we don't fit for somebody, that they'll fit for somebody else, you know, because our personalities are very different. Um, and what we offer, I mean, we offer different things. Sometimes, uh, decor isn't a priority to them. So sometimes we lean more on doing that. Some people want the really extravagant over the top uh, tech stuff. And that's where Mike comes in and they're like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. That's too much work. So we get Mike in there. And so it works out really well for us. And nobody, I know far, so far, nobody's killed them each other or been mad at each other that I've known of. And so we're pretty happy. Cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't refer out anybody. I mean, we're a multi op company and um, no, I don't even, I don't even so refer every, people. Your, your company's ta- able to take on every single job. If we can't, I just tell them we're sold out because I don't have the confidence in anybody who I, I just don't. I, 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 like I said, we don't like each other. So that's and that sucks because that's sad. Yeah, it's sucks. totally yeah. an opportunity missed right there. It does suck. It really does. Right. Hmm. So. Well, guys, that is our hour. So I'd like to thank Jody and Cammie for uh, coming in and having some girl power here today. Thanks Uh, for having us. I I sincerely appreciate it. And I believe next week, uh, Brian is back, which is good. Brian had a large corporate event tonight because he is a rock star DJ flying all over the place. And uh, for those of you that were looking for us last week, Last week, both Brian and I were flying back from uh, Las, Las Vegas. I actually had done a, a Thursday, a very rare for me Thursday night wedding. Um, that was a nice small little wedding that uh, the client did not necessarily say they wanted me at the time of the booking, but they booked us for DJ. They booked us for photography. They booked our, my floral company too. So I knew that even if I told them they had made a mistake, it would it would muddy the water. So. I changed my flight and I flew back uh, on the red eye on Wednesday night to uh, make sure that this client was thrilled. And they had a really nice, it was like an 80 person small wedding, but people danced, had a great time. It ended a little bit early, but uh, I was definitely a zombie from the traveling. But uh, so that's why we weren't on last Thursday and um, that's it. So for those of you that uh, tune in somewhat regularly, I sincerely do appreciate it. Go ahead and put your comments on there. Um, I think everybody knows that I'm producing a little DJ show in Chicago this upcoming July, the 9th through the 11th. 
Um, follow us on Facebook. And if you go to Facebook, you can see our announcement that we've already announced our Monday set of, of uh, speakers and what they're going to be speaking on next week. We're going to be announcing day two, which is, uh, um, which is uh, going to be coming up. And so you can, until Saturday, that would be the what's it, 24th, you can save $100 on your passes. So go to marqueeshow.com, use promo code Las Vegas that we extended to all the people that we met in Las Vegas at PBX. So thank you, DJ Stefan. You have a great night as well. Eric, thank you. Gus, thank you for uh, chiming in. Anybody who watched this afterwards, feel free to comment as well. Thank you all. Thank you, Jody and Cammie. John, are you here? Are you joining us? I'm right here. He's right here. So John's going to take us out. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks, Casey. Thanks, everybody. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice. DJ Event Planner. ADJ NLFX Professional Promo Only Newmark and DJ and TV Insiders <laughs>